Okay, now let's talk about how to design the landing gear layout. So what we need to determine is first the type. So this is whether it's a nose wheel, a tail wheel, or a bicycle layout. Then the layout of each leg unit. as well as the tire pressures. So this is based on the aircraft weight and the allowable run runway loading. Then, figure out the approximate size of the tires. Uh, and the axle travel. So this is the amount of distance that the springs can compress. So the landing gear are located on springs uh, and so when the aircraft lands and there's a downforce the spring can be compressed to prevent too uh, strong of loads being transferred to the airframe. So we need to determine that max travel distance. You need to know the aircraft and wing angles at landing and takeoff. And also we need to determine the box in which the, C the CG the center of gravity, center of mass of the aircraft may lie. So the sort of full range of locations in which it's allowed to, to be located. So to determine those things, we need to consider the following. The wheel locations and a side view. Uh, during landing and takeoff. The wheel arrangement, which is from the top view of the aircraft. And we're going to look at an example For a nose wheel configuration, nose, not noise, nose wheel. Um, so we've now done task A here. So we need to know B using the angle on landing. Uh, here we're going to call that theta, um, and E, basically, we're interested in the most adverse center of gravity location, allows the main landing gear to be located. Uh, as follows. So if we draw, this is actually the ground line. This is actually horizontal, but it's easier to draw this at an angle and draw the aircraft horizontally. Then if this, say, is the worst possible location for the CG and horizontal lines through the CG along the direction and length of the aircraft makes this angle theta with the ground then for a nose wheel aircraft we have to have some minimum clearance distance between the back of the tail and the ground, and that might be something like 15 centimeters. And then if we take a, a line from the CG
that is perpendicular to the ground, we then want to take another line, this is greatly exaggerated, that's four degrees back. And that is where the contact point for the main gear will be. It's a little big. So this, to figure this out, we need B, as if there's two wheels in front of one another instead, uh, then we need to know where that wheel will be located. Um, and we also need to know C, the size of the tires to get this diameter, and the travel distance to at maximum compression, so we'll know how far away we are from the airframe in order to figure all of these, uh, ge this geometry out. So if we were to put the main wheels too far back, that would require excessive elevator for lifting the nose at takeoff. And if we put the main wheels too far forward, that'll give poor static stability on the ground, as in not enough weight uh, will be on the nose gear um, for the aircraft to stably move around on the ground. On a tailwheel layout, the contact point should be about 17 degrees forward instead. So the next thing we need to do is verify the wheel position at takeoff. So again, now let's draw the ground. And again, here's our aircraft. And now we've located our main gear. And there's some ground angle for the aircraft, which is the angle between here and here, which is very small, usually negligible. So again, some G we consider the furthest back location. And now, let's just sketch the nose gear here. And we need to now be concerned with three distant, or with two distances. LA, the distance from the CG to the nose gear. And LB, the distance from the CG to the main gear. Here, the tires and shock absorbers are compressed under the aircraft weight, um, which is what gives rise to some of this ground angle. Normally, the nose gear supports about 10% of the takeoff weight. And what we want for that to be the case is for LA over LA plus LB to lie between 0.08 and 0.14. Now, the wheel arrangement in the lateral direction, so where the wheels are located uh, looking down from the top view of the aircraft, is less critical. But there are some stability constraints that come into play, um, and those will be discussed now. Um, so more commonly, the lateral location of the landing gear is determined by stowage requirements or requirements due to how the landing gear is structurally attached to the rest of the aircraft. But as a rule of thumb, you can draw a triangle. like this, 
the line there. And I'll just draw this out. This is the CG. And this is view AA, which is cut through here. These lines are parallel. And this is perpendicular to the aircraft center line. This is the location of the nose wheel. This angle should not be more than 80 degrees. And these are the location of the main wheels. And looking at those through uh, cut AA, um, we can see that the angle formed between the ground going up to the location of the CG should not exceed 55 degrees.